Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this Polish WZ-34 armoured car. This is a 72nd scale plastic model from First to Fight, which is of course intended for use with their war game Rzezian 1939. The back of the box has a bit of information in Polish, German and English, a basic painting guide with a list of Vallejo colours, and some instructions. These exploded diagrams are a bit small, and the parts are not labelled, but it is a pretty simple kit, so these should be sufficient. If you do want a better look at the instructions, without having to hold the box up to your face, First to Fight do have an image of the instructions in their store page. I've put a link to that in the description. Inside the box we get this sprue, which has almost all of the various bits we'll need to make this armoured car. The moulding here is quite nice and neat, which isn't surprising really. First to fight models in my experience are consistently pretty good. There's not a whole lot of parts here, like I said before, it is a pretty simple kit, and the detail is quite nice. There's a few fine bits here and there, though obviously it's not a fine scale replica with extreme levels of detail or anything like that, and it is actually intended as a wargaming kit, so for that I would say the detail is really good. First to Fight do often seem to avoid having chunky detail for added strength, so in that way they're quite different to your average wargaming kit. The car's body comes on its own sprue, and all the things I said about the other sprue are the same here. It looks really nice. Even the moulded on shovel looks quite exceptional, and almost as though it could have been glued on as a separate part. Very nice. There are no instructions inside the box, nor any decals. If you want markings, you need to supply your own decals or hand paint them on. As with all of the other First to Fight kits, you do get a magazine. You won't believe it, but I still can't read Polish. So I can't read this, but it is still a nice inclusion, and you can still look at the pictures and understand the painting guide, which is slightly more in depth than the one on the box. That's all well and good, but now it's time to glue some bits of plastic together. The body seems to be as good a starting point as any, so I take the body and glue the frame into the bottom of it. This is guided into place with pins and corresponding sockets. Very straightforward. A little pressure was needed to get it together properly without any gaps. It's also not a bad idea to add some extra glue along the areas where the frame contacts the body. On the rear of the body there's an opening for a door, so I put a door there. Do be careful with this, it can pretty easily fall inside the body because there's nothing inside of it to hold it and prevent it from being pushed in. Not really a big deal, but you don't want to lose your door inside the car. There are two doors in this kit, and because the instructions on the box are so tiny, I didn't notice there was a number, which indicates that the part to use is number 14, which I'm pretty sure I did. Next I attached the lower framey suspension-y drive shafty bit, and as you can see there are guide pins for this as well, and it's very easy to press it into place. It is pretty thin though so be careful when handling it and removing it from the sprue. You might also have to do a bit of nudging to get the leaf spring bits lined up with the sides of the frame, and obviously you'll have to add glue there so the parts stay there and don't have inappropriate gaps. The spare wheel mounts onto a little nub on the side of the body here like so. Just be sure that you are using the correct wheel. This is also labelled on the instructions, though it's not very clear on the box because of how small it is. Despite that, it is easy enough to figure out which wheel should go here anyway. This is certainly not enough wheels for the vehicle, so let's add a few more. The front wheels are easy enough to place, though you'll probably find you need to apply some pressure to get them all the way on. Be careful when doing this. The axle is shaped in such a way that just applying pressure to it will bend it backwards and almost certainly break it. You can put a finger or your knife or something in there behind it to stop it from bending and things should be fine and dandy. The rear wheels are a bit easier to put on. You don't need to worry about bending the axle, though you probably still don't want to put too much pressure on these parts either. There are two wheels on each side at the rear, and it's fairly obvious which goes inside and which goes on the outside. It looks pretty good, but we need something to stop the mud from flying up and going everywhere. That seems like a pretty important thing to worry about. Mud guards should stop that. That's why they're called mud guards. They guard against the mud. Get to it, Herbert! These are pretty easy to install, but obviously make sure that you're putting the correct part on the correct end of the vehicle, otherwise there might be issues. On the left of the vehicle there's a little box, presumably for some delicious Polish snacks. 
I don't know what to polish snack on, but I want some. There's a small lamp that goes on the front. Well, it's not a windshield, but there are bits for the driver to look through, so it's the looky three bit. This little lamp goes here. It's tiny and fiddly, but not especially difficult to get into place. And now it's turret time. The most exciting time in the life of an armoured car. Unless it hasn't got a turret, I guess. All that needs to be done here is glue the gun onto the front of the turret, which is very easy. There were two guns on the sprue, and I don't know about these armoured cars, so I don't know which gun would be used when, but I used the machine gun that's depicted in the instructions and on the box. Finally, the turret can be attached to the body. There's no locking tab mechanism here, but there is a guide pin. The turret goes into place easily, though it is a fairly tight fit. I suppose that is what you want. You don't want it to just fall off, that would be annoying. Anyway, with that, the first to fight WZ-34 in 70 second scale is completed. It's a nice, simple kit with a good result, and I'm quite happy with it. I think it's interesting looking, though I don't think I would want to be in one on an active battlefield. It doesn't really look like it could take much punishment, but it looks nice and really that's what matters, isn't it? I don't personally play any war games in this scale, but that's okay. I think the first to fight kits, even though they are wargaming kits, also work quite nicely as little display pieces. Sure, they probably won't please a rivet counter, and of course that doesn't bother me, but they're quite well detailed for what they are, and they're relatively cheap too. Not only that, but this kit was pretty quick and easy to put together. If you do plan on using this in gaming and you want a nice little swarm of WZ-34s, you could whip up a bunch of these in an afternoon. Some of the small fiddly parts can get, well, fiddly. Who would have guessed? But in comparison to other scale model kits in this scale, these are really easy and don't have quite so many parts. Personally, I like building kits, so I'm not put off by a high part count, but I would imagine there are some folks out there who don't really like building, but still want a nice kit to display, or maybe they just prefer painting. And I think these are ideal for that kind of person, as well as war gamers, of course. Anyway, I might be waffling now, so I'll finish by saying this is a nice little kit and I rather enjoyed putting it together. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel. The link is in the description below, and I do have a couple more first to fight kits coming up. If you've not already done so, why not subscribe here on YouTube for the low low price of nothing. Even I can afford nothing, but if you've got the means and you want to help a herpaderpaderp do herpaderpaderp things and see my videos a bit early, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, be excellent to each other, have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.